Okay, this is a very important chart. Now, I got to explain to you what you're looking at. We're looking at the chart on the top is Brent Oil and West Texas Intermediate Oil Prices. And this chart goes back to for roughly the last five years or so. It goes back uh, starting in January 2013, and it goes up uh, till January 2018. Actually, it goes into the future. It's actually a forecast chart in oil. That's the chart on the top. Now, we have four marking positions. Marking position number one, two, three, four, and five. Now, if you notice the chart directly below it, we have the same. Marking positions one, two, three, four, and five. Now, what the chart on the bottom is, the darker, blacker color chart with the orange line, that represents the U.S. dollar index. Now, the years on the two chart, I've lined the years up. So, 2013 matches January 2014 on the top chart. Now, if you notice the bottom chart, 2014 matches up with January 2014 on the chart as well, and same with 15 and 16 and 17. I've compressed the size of the chart on the bottom so that the years will match up. Now, what we're looking at is, with oil, we're looking at an inverse relationship to the U.S. dollar index. So what you're seeing here is that on position 1, on the top chart and position one on the bottom chart, that the price the of oil was high. It was around a little bit more than a hundred dollars a barrel, almost uh, maybe one ten even. And uh, the U.S. dollar index was low. It was about uh, more or less uh, around eighty on the U.S. dollar index on um, position one. And we know the dollar takes off. Zoom. Now look at what oil does at exactly the same time. Exactly this precisely the same time it takes off. Now if you watch the line on the US dollar index on the bottom, it zooms up until it reaches a line at 95 on the US dollar index and it stops. Oil does the same thing. It falls in the same inverse relationship in the same period of time. And until it reaches position number two, and the dollar index, it stops there when it reaches position number two. Now what we see is, we see position number three matches position number three, where it's a little, little bump up in the price of the U.S. dollar index, and a little drop in the price of oil. Position number four shows a little bump up again in the U.S. dollar index, matches precisely the position of number four in the little drop in the price of oil. And then we see position number five lines up precisely with the little drop in the price of oil with a little bump up in the U.S. dollar index. We can see these two charts line up absolutely precisely according to the same time frame and the same uh, inverse relationship between oil and the U.S. dollar index. Now we're going to take a look at the co-relationship between the U.S. 10-year and the, uh, the U.S. dollar index. And what you're looking at here, the top chart is the U.S. 10-year, and we're looking at a one-year chart. And just beneath it, we're looking at the one-year chart for the U.S. dollar index. Now, if you look at both charts, first look at the top chart, uh, which is the blue colored, light blue colored chart, which is the U.S. dollar index. And then the chart directly beneath it, which is the orange colored line. And what you notice is bounce for bounce, drop for drop. Now, one, it, it it's coincides precisely with the top chart, the, the U.S. 10, ten the, the uh, bonds. And the U.S. 10-year uh, bond and the, uh, the U.S. dollar index. But what you have to understand here is when the price of bonds is rising on the chart, on the top chart, it's actually falling, right? So this is actually another inverse relationship, meaning that 
as bond prices are climbing on the chart really represents an increase in the price of the bonds uh the 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 10 year has cl the price has climbed which means the bond price has actually fallen uh so uh, i know it's confusing but bond uh yields uh have an inverse relationship so uh but when we put when we compare the two charts we see exactly the same peaks and valleys uh, the two charts are, are coincide with one another. So what this means is, is as the U.S. dollar index has been climbing, the bond prices have been falling in exactly the same pattern. You can see exactly the same pattern here. Now, if we look at the third chart down here, the Brent crude prices, this is and Brent and West Texas intermediate crude prices. What you're seeing here is a forecast chart. If you notice, the time frame is 2016, and then that dotted line right there shows where we are right now, right this minute. That's around January of 2017. As the line progresses forwards, they're trying to show you where they conceive of the prices going uh, for uh, uh, crude prices and oil prices. They, can see, they conceive that the price is going to slowly climb. Uh, I think that they're mistaken. I think that in their in their they're showing uh, it's a very slow, very slow climb over a period of of years. I think they're very much mistaken. I uh, already know for an absolute fact that oil inventories are dropping much faster than they ever thought that they would. And West Texas, uh, the rig count is climbing, and they're producing more than they have been uh, a few months back. So this has yielded me to conclude that inventories are going to drop much faster than expected, especially now that uh, OPEC is uh, tapering back and they're cutting production. Uh, very shortly, I expect a lot of wells in West Texas, uh, the shale oil wells are going to go offline, start going offline. Uh, one by one, and what we're going to be looking at is a much steeper curve on this forecast curve on the third chart down, a much steeper curve upwards in the price of oil. Of course, because that's an inverse relationship to the U.S. dollar, that means that the U.S. dollar is going to start to decline. Okay, so so this is what we're looking at right here, and uh, you can see these relationships uh, between uh, now a little bit clearer between bond prices, between oil prices, and and uh, the U.S. dollar index. Now the thing to really watch out for is, as oil prices go up, what's going to happen is the U.S. dollar index is going to drop. It's amazing that it's being held up so high as it is right now. It's actually in a bit of a bubble. It's in bubble territory. It's it's overpriced, the U.S. dollar index. Uh, as oil prices go up, the U.S. dollar index is going to decline. It's going to decline slower at first. And then when it hits 70, as it drops, when the U.S. dollar index hits 70, that's going to be an inflection point. You know, you say 70. Oh, it'll never be 70. Oh, yes, it will. It's going to very slowly fall, very, very slowly fall. And it's going to fall down into the 90s, then into the 80s, and it's going to hit 70 at a certain point when the when oil prices are back up quite a bit higher, substantially higher than they are now. now this will take time, but trust me, they're going to get there. When the dollar index drops below 70, that's when we're going to see a precipitous drop in the dollar. That's going to be the crushing blow that's going to start off this, this crisis. Now, all of this coming together in my work of charting, in my work of, of seeing how these things are laying out, I don't really understand how this is going to happen uh, much faster than it's going to happen. In other words, I see this as a slow decline from the dollar index being overpriced right now. I see this more as a slow decline over the next period of time while the oil slowly climbs back up and not something that's going to happen uh, in the very close immediate future. In other words, within the next two months or the next month, 
I see this as something that's going to happen over the next 24 to 36 months uh, time frame, more than in the next uh, month or two. Uh, so uh, that's the way I see it, and that's my personal opi opinion on it. Um, but trust me, it's going to get there. And when it does drop below 70, that's when the crisis is going to begin, when the U.S. dollar index drops below 70. And that's when the dollar is going to start to uh, die, essentially. And it's going to cause such disruption, it's going to be amazing, because uh, it's going to cause what's called a hyperinflation. Now, if you don't know what that is, study a little bit about what happened in a number of other countries and a number of other places and in another number of other times in history. One of the most famous times and periods in history of a hyperinflation is in Weimar, Germany. Uh, and also Zimbabwe, uh, they had a hyperinflation. And more recently, you can look to Venezuela, their experience in the hyperinflation rate at this moment. So thank you very much for listening. Like and subscribe. And bye-bye uh, and until the next video.